probably the most serious consequence of Chernobyl that I'm aware of is that only 20% of children in Belarus are considered healthy. That means that 80% of the children in Belarus are not well compared to the data that they have of children before the Chernobyl accident. And they're medically not well and they are intellectually below par. How, how would that, what would be the, uh, the relationship there between radioactivity and a, a deterioration of intellectual capability? Well, while a mother is pregnant, she is eating food, and what happened was that most of the people didn't, either did not know or they did not have access to food that was not contaminated. These isotopes are taken into the body while a woman is pregnant. They are transported through her body to the unborn and damage the, the heart, the lungs, the thyroids, the brains, all of the tissues, the immunological system of these unborn. These children are born unwell, low birth weight. There was a very high uh, fetal death rate as a result of these exposures. This is probably the greatest tragedy that could occur to a, a, a culture. After the accident from the Ukraine, which had been the breadbasket of the former Soviet Union, and it's where Chernobyl was and is. I mean, in fact, there's three units of the Chernobyl nuclear facility uh, still in operation. In any case, that food moved around. Well, this is, a big, this is an extremely serious problem. How do you get enough food for people if the land is contaminated for three centuries? And not only are you worried about grains like wheat and rye, but, and, but you have to also worry about m mushrooms. Doesn't sound very important, but mushrooms are a very big part of the food supply in that area. And these are extremely contaminated. The book concludes, based on now available medical data, 985,000 people dead. Mm -hmm. The data, however, just covers 1986 to 2004. Is that, as we open the program mentioning a million casualties, would that be essentially the number that became victims of Chernobyl? I believe that's correct, yes that we will see that many. We know, for instance, that of the um, people called the liquidators, these were the young men and women who were recruited largely from uh, military, from countries all around the area to go in and try and put out the fires and contain the Chernobyl mess. 15% of them uh, have died. And now these were young men and women, not you know, we're talking 18 to maybe 30. Dr. Sherman, in terms of the amount of radioactivity emitted from the plant, there too, there's, there's a big discrepancy between what's revealed in this book and what's been acknowledged up to now. Absolutely, and we, if a small amount was emitted, then we have to conclude that, that low levels of radiation are extremely damaging. If large levels were emitted, then we have to uh, understand how much damage has been done. But we really don't know yet because nobody has been able to go in and find out what is actually left in the uh, reactor that is leaking into the groundwater. What does this say about the safety of nuclear power? I mean, the nuclear industry, the nuclear establishment, because of a lot of the nuclear industry involves government entities, uh, a push is on to revive nuclear power, to create a nuclear renaissance, to build many, many more nuclear power plants. What's the lesson of Chernobyl and that? I think the lesson of Chernobyl is that we should be very cautious before we push technology. I mean, we were told that there was no problem with the British Petroleum drilling in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, one th there is one issue of technology where engineers do certain things, but they don't understand the biology. 
they don't understand what is happening to life around these installations. And I think that Chernobyl is the biggest lesson of what has happened to all species that were contaminated. No exceptions. I mean, the book indeed talks about the owls, and could you elaborate on some of the effects on animals? One of the, the scientists whose photograph is on the cover of the book is Tim Mousseau from the University of South Carolina. He's led about over 25 groups of scientists to um, the Chernobyl area, and they have studied insects and birds and animals and owls and all kinds of different animals as to what's going on. He said one of the trips he made that he suddenly realized there were no bees and there, were no, there was no fruit falling on the ground. And he realized there was no fruit falling on the ground because there was no bees that had pollinated the trees. So he is predicting, and this may indeed, indeed happen, that there could indeed be a complete loss of species around Chernobyl as a result of these uh, isotopes that are still decaying uh, that could wipe out entire species. You know, after all, it is a major bird transport area, a migration area, and we don't know ha what's happening when the birds come through, eat whatever they can find on the ground, and then fly on dropping the berries further on uh, after they've left the Chernobyl area. The genetic impacts, I mean radioactivity has an enormous uh, effect on genes. Speak on that. These are, are unlikely to be improved. Once you get a genetic defect, it becomes transmitted generation after generation after generation. So these defects that are occurring in humans, in birds, in plants, are unlikely to improve the species as they occur. What kind of genetic defects are you speaking of? Well, we're ta in humans we're talking about brain defects, uh, heart defects, limb defects, children without arms, uh, hydrocephalic babies. In birds we're, we're looking at changes in the feathers and in the beaks and in their brain size. You talk about bird brains, these birds are not as smart and they're not going to be able to function as well as the birds that are not changed. We know that the plants have been changed irreversibly. You know, this is, this is not rocket science. We know where these isotopes go. We know that iodine goes to the Thyroid. We know that strontium-90 goes to bones and teeth, particularly of the unborn. We know that cesium-137 goes to the heart and to the muscles. This is not a mystery. And if we know this, we can, we can predict what the adverse effects are going to be. And indeed, they turned out to be just that, and it's shown, proven in this book. This has to constitute one of the, well, the claim that just a few thousand, a few thousand people died as a result of the Chernobyl disaster, one of the biggest lies in history, no? Absolutely. And they've been able to get away with it. I mean, we, we need to put pressure on the WHO to be, and the United Nations to separate the WHO from the IAEA. Not just on the international level with the International Atomic Energy Agency, and the World Health Organization. Here in the United States, the, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission has, too, tried to minimize the impacts of radioactivity. You're absolutely correct. And I can go back to the Atomic Energy Commission before the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. I worked for the AEC at the University of California in 1952. That was my first job out of college. And if I could figure out, with my limited experience at that time and my limited education at that time that radiation was harmful then other people could figure it out. We have had secrecy and lies to the American public for decades about the effects of nuclear radiation. There have been cover-ups, there have been 
uh, falsification of data. There have been people who said, well, don't worry about a little str uh, strontium-90, don't worry about the tritium coming out of the plant. Uh, we know that Davis Bessie almost melted within an inch of its containment as a result of uh, poor maintenance. And I believe it's just a matter of time before we have a nuclear, nuclear uh, problem somewhere in the world, if not in the United States. Well, why? I mean, you were within the, the nuclear establishment way back. We're talking about a half century ago. Yes. Plus. I mean, it has to do with money? Does it have to do with, with promoting a technology that these people are connected with, the nuclear scientists? Why the lying? Why the deception? I think it has to do with many things. I think it's the, the, the money and the control is on uh, corporations who are promoting nuclear technology. But we also have enormous scientific uh, ignorance in this country. People who really don't understand biology. I think if I lined up 20 people in a, in, let's say in a, a mall someplace and said, Put your hand over your liver. I'll bet you half of them couldn't do it. And to, to, to explain to people what's happening with nuclear radiation, I think be, our educational system is so poor these days that children are not learning about biology and physics and chemistry. And it's essential because it's such a major part of our culture and our economy. As you plow through all this data, the consequences of Chernobyl did the experience back decades ago oh, connect in any way to what you were doing? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's, it, this has been known for decades. The adverse effects of radioactivity have been known for decades. This is not something that has just occurred in the last couple of years. I mean, scientists who have any knowledge whatsoever of physics can figure out where a isotope is going to go in a body or in a plant or in a bird. I mean, this is not mister, mysterious kinds of science. What does Chernobyl represent? I mean, we're talking a million dead. What does it represent in terms of oh, technological history or the current technological scene? What does it mean? I think it represents very strongly that we cannot depend on technology, nor we can, can we depend on humans who operate and design this technology, because the ultimate failure is human failure, as happened at Chernobyl. But you're talking here about health consequences on, on the most massive of scales. Yes, indeed, around the entire northern hemisphere wherever the, the fallout was, people ended up dead. They, they wound up dead, and they wound up with children who were grossly impaired intellectually and medically, and this is going on. It hasn't stopped yet. It's still going on. Dr. Sherman, how can people get a copy of this book? Uh, they could contact me by email. I'm toxdoc, T is in Tom, O-X, D is in Dorothy O C dot J S at Verizon dot net. And uh, I hope to have information on how they can get copies of this book. Yes, I think it's very important at this time that people learn the truth about what happened as a result of the Chernobyl disaster. Thank you so much for, for doing this work, Dr. Sherman. This has been Enviro Close Up. I am Carl Grossman. Thank you for watching, and to get a copy of this or any Enviro video program, just visit our website at www.envirovideo.com.